Brucey are closing fast. Yes. Wait, what? Despicable Me 3 is the third Despicable Me movie and the fourth movie in the Despicable Me franchise. It is also the second highest grossing movie in the franchise, but it looks like it's going to be bumped down because Minions, The Rise of Gru, is probably going to become one of the highest grossing movies in the franchise. Despicable Me 3 follows Gru's story when he finds out that he has a twin brother named Drew and they team up to stop an evil villain known as Evil Brat. But hey, I'm sure you guys know all about this movie, so I'm not going to waste time explaining it. But what I'm sure you guys don't know is that there are some secrets that were sneakily hidden into the movie. Don't trust me? Well, let's take a look at some of these secrets. Just get in the way! We know the Grinch as the sadist who hated Christmas and tried to steal Christmas. Sure, he became a good guy at the end of the movie, but he didn't exactly have a lot of fans at the very beginning. But it looks like he has one fan in the Despicable Me franchise, and that's Margot. Do you guys remember that scene where there was kind of a festival in Drew's village and little girls had to take cheese from the plates of the little boys? One boy was left because nobody wanted to take his cheese. Lucy then convinced Margot to take the cheese, and Margot agrees. Now, as she moves closer to the boy, if you take a close look at her shirt, you'll see that it has a picture of the Grinch on it, and this tells us that Margot is a big fan of the Grinch. We only see the Grinch for a few short seconds, so you shouldn't beat yourself up too much if you miss this. There is also a hint from Universal Studios because the Grinch was the next movie that Universal Studios had lined up after Despicable Me 3. Am I right? <laughs> oh. I'm pretty sure that you guys know that Universal Studios is the house behind the Despicable Me franchise, but what you guys probably don't know is that the studio also managed to sneak in a reference to themselves in Despicable Me 3. So do you guys remember that scene where the minions were starving and they saw a pizza delivery guy on a motorbike and chased him down? Well, I can't say that I blame the minions for running after the guy because they were hungry, and hey, who doesn't like pizza, especially when it's free? Anyways, the Minions chased him into a movie studio, and while it looks like every other movie studio, it's actually Universal Studios. Now, this wasn't made explicitly clear in the scene, because it wasn't like there was a big sign announcing that it was Universal Studios, but while the chase was going on, we briefly saw the studio's logo, and the logo was exactly the same as Universal Studios. It was obviously fun for the animators to animate this scene and give themselves a pat on the back. And if we're being honest, they totally deserve the pat because they did a great job on the movie. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> also, the Universal Studios logo is not the only secret hidden in what I like to call the pizza scene, because there is also a very secret reference to the Fast and Furious franchise. This reference was only on screen for less than a second, and you would have missed it if you didn't know what to look for. But luckily for you guys, I know exactly what to look out for, and I caught this reference. While the poor pizza delivery guy was doing his best to evade the minions in the studio, we briefly see a movie poster for a movie titled Fast Driver 12. This is very clearly a reference to the Fast and Furious franchise, and did you guys catch the subtle shade they threw at Fast and Furious for having so many movies? I can't say I blame them for the shade because Fast and Furious has 11 movies already, and there are at least three more in the works. Universal Studios is also the home of the Fast and Furious franchise, so this further proves that they know how to poke fun at themselves. The pizza scene is filled with so many Easter eggs that it's almost impossible to catch them all. One thing about Despicable Me 3 is that it's filled with references to other movies by Universal Studios, and I think that's pretty cool. There's something that the fans just love about seeing their favorite older movies in their new movie, and Despicable Me 3 manages to hit on this note. Anyways, back to the pizza scene. The minions chased the pizza delivery guy into the studio, and they somehow ended up on stage to audition for a talent show. Do you guys know which Universal movie is about animals auditioning at a talent show? Yep, you got it right. Sing. Even better, the talent show is actually titled Sing, and we know this because we briefly see a poster for the show just before the minions run into the show and start singing. Well, at least we know that if the minions ever decide to give up on their lifestyle of crime, they could probably be the next big thing in Hollywood. Happy. On behalf of your twin brother Drew, he needs your help. What? 
Speaking of the minions and their love of crime, at the beginning of Despicable Me 3, they decide to break up with Gru because he did not want to live a life of crime. Gru was working for the anti-villain league so he could no longer be a villain. Plus, he already gave that lifestyle up when he adopted Margot, Edith, and Agnes. Anyways, the minions got mad because they wanted to be bad guys and Gru wanted to be good, so they quit. Now, at the scene where they quit, you can see Mel, one of the minions who is kind of like the union leader, and he has on a baseball cap that says, I love Gru. Now, at the end of the movie, when the minions escape with Drew and set out to do bad supervillain stuff, Mel has on a baseball cap again, but this time, it says I love Drew instead of I love Gru. And this is a sign that the minions might have shifted their allegiance to Drew and left Gru alone. Well, I'm sure they'll probably visit or something. In my mouth, because it's so good I don't want to swallow it. Pink Panther is another movie franchise that's pretty popular, so it makes sense that there's a Pink Panther reference in Despicable Me 3. This reference is not as deeply hidden as some of the others on the list, but if you haven't seen the 2006 Pink Panther movie, then you probably won't get this reference. So you guys know the scene early on in the movie when they thought the pink diamond had been stolen? Well, that is a direct reference to Pink Panther because the movie was about a giant pink diamond that got stolen. Two clumsy and inefficient detectives were assigned to the case, and this is also what happened in Despicable Me 3. Hey, how you doing? Finally, we have a reference to one of the best animated movies ever, and that is Finding Nemo. You guys already know all about the story of how Nemo got separated from his father and how his father had to team up with Dory to find him. Do you guys remember that scene where the person in the boat picked Nemo out of the water and sped off, scattering the fish in the water? Well, in the first scenes in Despicable Me 3, where Gru, Lucy, and the minions were in pursuit of evil Brat, there's a very similar scene where they jump out of the water and cause the fish in the water to scatter. Among the fishes were two clownfish who look exactly like Nemo and Marlin. So that's some of the hidden secrets that were in Despicable Me 3. It's kind of interesting how many Easter eggs are hidden in these movies, and many times, we're too focused on the larger picture that we don't notice these tiny details that make the movie 10 times better. So tell me guys, which one of these hidden secrets did you know before watching these videos? What ones did you find most interesting? Also, did I leave any of them out? Let me know what you think in the comments because I love hearing back from you guys. Anyways, we both know that you love this video, so go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss awesome videos like this.